Welcome to TYT Sports, everybody. A quick pickup before we get into our UFC 200 preview clip. I sat down with, or really Skyped in, our new friends at the Fight Network, which is uh, a great MMA UFC uh, breakdown network. And we sat with Robin Black, and we were discussing all of the fights ahead of UFC 200. Nunes versus Tate, Jones versus Cormier. Only problem with that is after we were done shooting, the news broke that uh, John Jones is off of the UFC 200 card for uh, being flagged by USADA for a doping violation. The opponent for Cormier is still up in the air. It might be announced at some point around when this clip goes up, but we hope you enjoy the rest of the preview with the Fight Network. We cover everything from Edgar Aldo, Lesnar versus Hunt. It was a great clip. Take a look. It was, uh, Frankie Edgar versus Jose Aldo, and I'm not sure if you agree with this one, but I do see this as an old school versus a new school. Now, no discrediting Jose Aldo, he's one of the best in his division, uh, but it has been a while since we've seen Jose Aldo really show why he was so dominant in his division. Of course, there's the 13-second knockout from uh, Conor McGregor, which really didn't show too much because he was pretty much on the ground watching McGregor run around with his belt. Now, Frankie Edgar, a new school fighter, or at least more new school than you can say of Aldo, when these two match up with each other, and again, another matchup that we've seen once before, and we know these guys are going to learn from their mistakes that they made in the first fight to see what's going to happen in the second. When you look at this fight, what do you see from Aldo and Edgar that has to go at least in either's direction for a win to come out of it? Well, I like the way you think, my friend, and it's obvious that you're a fight connoisseur, and I agree with you. I, I think when you look at Jose Aldo, what made him great, and Hen and Barrow, they were the, right. the bantamweight and featherweight champions for a long time, two of the very best for pound, pound for pound fighters in the world, is their whole team, Andre Pettineris, their coach, built a game around the moments of sort of 2006-7 to 2014, a game around where the, the fight world had evolved to that perfectly mastered all the variables. And it was built on fundamentals. There was nobody that was a better fundamentals-based fighter than Jose Aldo. Still, maybe there isn't. Unbelievable jab, left hook to low kick, moves his feet, uses aggression well, action fighter, forces you to try to take his single leg. When he does, when you do, he punishes you, sets a trap for you. Of course. Brilliant fundamentals. Now, the issue is, if we look at any sport, if we talk about the fundamentals of baseball and, the, and we talk about the fundamentals of baseball in the 1960s, they're different. Absolutely. The fundamentals in the 1960s might have been hit, catch, throw, simple. But the games, sports, everything in the world gets more complicated. And if you talk about baseball fundamentals today, they are so far advanced to what they were Absolutely. even a decade ago. So although Jose Aldo's fundamentals of 2010 are the best in the world, the fundamentals of 2016 and 2017, does he have them? And a lot of those include footwork, angles, uh, penetrating distance in different ways, pivoting, making the, the fighter have his face over here while you're standing right. here, while he turns back to you, you pop him. Little basic fundamentals that are 2016 fundamentals should, could, and probably would beat those fundamentals of the great fighters from five years ago. Is Jose Aldo one of those guys? Because Frankie Edgar is one of the best fighters in the world, most involved, most advanced. The layers in which he accepts traps for you are so high. It, it's a hard fight for Jose. I agree with you 100%. And you say a lot of people see it this way. As close as three or four days ago, Jose Aldo was a fairly sizable favorite with the uh, odds makers. Really? But they're starting to catch on now. I think right. we're all seeing – to beat Frankie Edgar in 2016, you've got to be a 2016 fighter. We don't know if Jose Aldo is one. Also, Frankie Edgar has never, ever, ever, ever been stopped by anyone. Can you see Jose Aldo beating him for five rounds? Maybe not. So that means he needs to stop him, which would mean he'd be the first guy to ever do that. Possible, but less, far less likely. When it comes to the storylines for UFC 200, that I, I find to be the biggest question mark. While I understand guys like Brock Lesnar are on this card and fans are excited, and I understand the rivalry between Jones and Cormier. To me, the most exciting fight, at least leading up to it, is the Edgar Aldo fight, just because mm. I feel, and as you just pointed out, fundamentals change, and that's such an important note to make because the UFC evolves possibly faster, and I think there's up for debate here, but possibly faster than any other sport out there. Because what we see in different styles of fighters and how much 
it can change in a split second, let alone over the course of a year, over the course of four. What I think is a little unfair towards Jose Aldo is we're simply taking the safe route. We don't know if Jose Aldo has evolved into a 2016 fighter. But what I think is unfair is the mass reaction that came after a 13-second knockout to oh. Conor McGregor. Just because, and look, that's on him. He overextended, he got clean, cocked right in the face, and understandably so, McGregor took his belt. However, it doesn't overshadow how truly great of a fighter Jose Aldo is, was, and still possibly can be. But if Edgar does beat Aldo in this fight, it's going to be short memories for a lot of UFC fans. They're not going to remember, unfortunately, the Aldo of old. They're only going to remember the Aldo of 2016. But let's move forward with another fan-friendly fight, one that got everybody on their feet at UFC 199, also got Ariel Hawani's press credential taken off, at least for a day or two, uh, and that is Brock Lesnar versus Mark Hunt. Now, what's so interesting to me about this fight <laughs> is that there's been the old guard of UFC talent out there who said that Mark Hunt is going to destroy Brock Lesnar. There is some new guard out there who has said this could easily be a toss-up. As a betting man myself, I am staying so far away from this fight because I truthfully don't know what the outcome will be. Mark Hunt may be 42 years old, but Mark Hunt can fight like he's 32 at times. Some quick numbers on Mark Hunt. He's landed 86.2% of his significant strikes under the UFC banner to his opponent's head, the largest proportion of head strikes in UFC heavyweight history. What that says a little bit about Mark Hunt in this fight and in any fight is he's efficient with his strikes. And this guy also walks around the octagon at least like, like with the confidence you like to see at UFC fighters. Now, Brock Lesnar, of course, leaving the WWE behind for now, also conditioned in a different way. Now, he's of course had time to train to get back in the octagon. People need to understand that. But when it comes to this fight, is it, do you believe in the old guard when they say Mark Hunt could destroy Brock Lesnar? Or do you think that we're in for uh, a surprising outcome of sorts? What do you see out of these two fighters? Brock Lesnar has absolutely no business <laughs> being in a fight with Mark Hunt when it comes to skills. And he has no business, and no one has any business thinking that, that Lesnar can win a fight with Mark Hunt. Mm. But then it stops me. I realize we said that about Randy Couture. <laughs> we said that about, about all of the guys that he faced. You know, like he, we said there's no way he'll take down Cain Velasquez. Like True. there's every single thing that he does, he has no business doing. Now, I was talking with Ramdeen, uh, my partner, mm -hmm. on Five Rounds Today earlier, and Martial arts were created to beat the bigger, stronger, more athletic mm -hmm. man. That's what they are. And if the bigger, strong, more athletic man can kind of become a blue belt, the black belt martial artist will beat the blue belt who's big and strong and athletic. Brock Lesnar's skill level is very low. And I know sometimes we, we accept certain myths and things as truth. But Brock Lesnar's not even, although he has been a champion as a wrestler, He's been in like the elite of the elite as an amateur wrestler. Absolutely. You talked to, we talked to Zach Makovsky recently, who is an elite um, uh, bantamweight high level wrestler. Mm -hmm. We talked to Mike Thomas Brown, a former WC champion who mm -hmm. trains at ATT. All of these guys were like, Brock Lesnar actually isn't that good of a wrestler, but he was <laughs> able to become great with his athleticism and the speed and the acceleration and the engine that he has. So he overperforms the theory of martial arts is this guy shouldn't beat any of these guys. But he doesn't care about the theory, and his body doesn't care about the theory, and his genetics don't care about the theory, and his power and his acceleration and the force that he generates, and his belief in himself and his commitment to these punches that come from a 285-pound man, 290-pound man by, by night. So the, the science says – the, the, the um, martial arts science and, uh, says this guy doesn't have the skills to beat Mark Hunt, but he doesn't care. And that's why if you ask me who, who who would you recommend betting on, I would say never bet on this fight because right. <laughs> the facts on this side of the table say he can't move his feet like, like Hunt. He doesn't understand fighting in 2016 at all. He barely understood it then, and I know his jab looked fine, his mm -hmm. takedowns are good and all those things, but fighting is much more complex than that. And today, Mark Hunt understands that takedown defense starts with footwork. Yeah. So these strikers have taken over the concept of takedown defense. He, I'm defending your double leg if you have your hands on my legs. Right. I'm defending your single leg if you have your arms on my legs. 
footwork will prevent you from ever touching me. Proper footwork. Hunt has the type of footwork he can destroy Brock Lesnar. But I would not, despite having said all of that, I would be not surprised at all to see Brock Lesnar take a few shots, get a hold of him, drag him to the ground, maul him, and beat him senseless. And if he had to do it a second time, possibly do it a second time. So despite the fact that all the truths of martial arts say that there is no way Brock Lesnar wins this fight, the truths of Brock Lesnar say, yes, there are ways that he wins this fight, and he's proven it many, many times before. I think we're both in agreement. There's some fights that are worth betting on. Stay away from this one. Even the $5 bet might not be worth it on this type of fight. So we have a, a, a quick uh, minute here just to get your th real quick thoughts on Misha Tate and Amanda Nunes because these two, uh, again, the women's divisions have been shaken up so much. I'm actually extremely excited, by the way, very randomly, for Joanna Jetstrick on uh, Friday night as well. But when it comes to Tate and Nunes, now, if Tate doesn't win this fight, we have another massive shakeup in that division. If Tate does win, it kind of sets the tone for potentially a Ronda Rousey, which of course we know how Dana White works and the money and everything that goes along with that. Maybe a Holly Holm. There's, two, there's a lot that could happen. I think we would want to see Tate win because it keeps uh, at least the next amount of fights, it seems like, in a nice line. Now, if it doesn't and Nunes does come out in surprise, that could cause havoc, as I just put. So, real quick, your thoughts on Tate and Nunes. Nunes. Well, Mish Tate had a route to beat Ronda Rousey, which is why in the second fight she got laid in the fight. And that route right. was, because Tate's so well-rounded, keep Rousey outside distance, don't let her get a hold of her, and beat her up on the feet where she's better. Right. And against Holly Holm, she had a route to beat her because it was like, get in close and get to her back and choke right. her out because she's better. She's very good. She's an 8.5 to a 9 out of 10 in every department of fighting. And so she always has a route. Problem is with this fight is Nunez is exactly the same thing. Nunez <laughs> is very, very, very good at everything. So it's hard to find the spot to win. If they're equals in that regard, it comes down to heart. Yes. And Misha Tate's heart has been, you've seen it hundreds of times, including Absolutely. the Holly Holm fight, right down to the end, taking all kinds of abuse, staying with it, staying with it, staying with it, and getting it done. And she's also in incredible shape. So if it goes to the distance, Misha Tate will win it. If it doesn't, Either one of these girls can finish the other. It's, a, it's another one of those where if you got five bucks and you flip coins and you like to bet money, go ahead. But this one is very, very – we have a lack of cutness and dryness. You know what I mean? So I encourage everybody to go over to YouTube.com slash The Fight Network. As uh, Robin mentioned, there's a segment they have called Five Rounds amongst many other UFC and MMA coverage. And it's fantastic. It's authentic. It's similar to what I would say we do in terms of at least talking to the audience, having a conversation with you guys instead of – reading off, uh, you know, list after list after list. So make sure to go over, give them a subscription. They're nearing 100,000 subscribers. Let's get them there sooner than later. Make sure to follow Robin at Robin Black MMA on Twitter. You can check them out on Facebook.com as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to comment below. There's only 15 fights we're looking forward to for Saturday, a few more on Friday. The entire landscape of the UFC could be changing come Sunday morning. It will be exciting, and we'll see you next time.